what you'll find when writing is that this can give you tremendous professional renewal because sometimes when you get into your careers 10, 20, 30 years, it gets a little bit rote and a little bit um, you know, repetitive and a little bit boring and less interesting. This will get your juices going when you do the writing. This is going to make you feel so good about yourself. Um, and I think you really enjoy it. All right, so just to give you a flavor of the wide variety of writing that you can do just from the alumni of our course. And please, you know, when you get published after this, send me your book. I'll give you guys a plug. I, I love uh, circulating the books of our other physician authors and our alumna, uh, alumni in the class. So here's a, um, a beautiful novel written by Dr. Deborah Blaine and um, very professionally done. Okay, had a lot of fun doing that and a, and a, an alumna of our course. So that's an example of a, you know, fiction of a novel. Then we have um, Dr. Mark McLaughlin, who with a partner writer, I don't want to say a ghost writer, but a partner writer, he wrote a book on, you know, how, uh, you know, uh, how uh, this Dr. McLaughlin's a neurosurgeon and the book concerns how you can use the power of, of, of the mind of what you need to do to do neurosurgery in life. Okay, this was written, this was published by one of the big publishing houses, and um, Dr. McLaughlin got a very, very significant uh, advance for this, but most importantly, he had a blast, because you know what? You know what Mark loves? He loves to write, and he loves to teach, and he loves to be able to help people to um, experience the success he's had with the techniques that he's used to become a neurosurgeon is a very, very difficult job. He loves sharing that knowledge. So he's making money, but he's having fun and it's it's rejuvenating. It's a wonderful thing. And if you want to talk about, you know, not having to write War and Peace, well, here is a coloring book by uh, Dr. Jonathan Terry. And this is a, um, he's a uh, psychiatrist out in California. And, you know, if you look at this, not a lot of words, okay? So the sky is the limit, and he had a blast doing this, right? He absolutely had a blast doing this, and actually it's probably a pretty hot seller during the pandemic because I heard the coloring books and the, you know, the coloring books and the jigsaw puzzles and all that were kind of flying off the shelves, and they were back ordered. So I'm going to show you other examples of people from our class, of your colleagues, um, who have gone on to do writing, but you know, it doesn't have to be, gee, this is how, you know, you become a healthier person, which kind of everybody, every doctor wants to work at. There's all kinds of different ways um, that you can express yourself through writing. And as physicians, you are very, very well respected. You have a lot to say, and people want to hear what you have to say. So think with an open mind, and most importantly, start doing it. We'll talk about that. Okay, so... The, the lesson that I want you to take out of this first segment is that writing does not just give you benefits for somebody paying for your writing. Okay, you're going to write an article, they're going to pay you $2,000. You're going to write a book, they're going to give you an advance, and you're going to get, or you're going to self-publish it, you're going to get you know money for people buying your book. The rewards can go far beyond the, the, the rewards of establish yourself as an expert in an area or as a reliable author, uh, um, expert, whatever you want to call it, can be monumental and can really can be life-changing. So tell you a little bit about myself. So I graduated from law school in 1993, and when I was looking for a summer job for the summer of 1992, uh, second year summer, that's when people typically get a job as a law clerk and then they'll get hired if things go well by that law firm there um, when they graduate after the third year of law school. So this was at the height of the recession that was going on in that time and it was very, very difficult to get jobs as, um, as a lawyer. So when I was in law school, I looked like I was about 10 years old. It was kind of difficult for people to take me seriously because I looked so young. I had difficulty finding a job. So out of desperation, I'm on Cape Cod right now. This is our 
the inside of my porch here. I wrote to, we have a summer house on Cape Cod. I wrote to every lawyer in the town of Falmouth that I'm from. And I started at Abrams and I went to Zelinsky. And three or four lawyers wrote me back saying, thank you very much. It's very nice of you. We don't have anything. Most people ignored me. And one lawyer by the name of Babitsky, uh, close to the top of the list alphabetically, he wrote back, he says, look, give me a call when you're in town. And so I gave him a call and he uh, said, I don't have um, a job for you in terms of, uh, you know, law clerking, but I do have a job you want to write, help me write a couple of book chapters. This was during the school year still. And I said, sure. I got, you know, it's just a part-time job, do anything. I mean, like, my God, he paid me $10 an hour. I thought I was rich. Before that, I was making $5 an hour in the summer, so I just doubled my salary. And I did a couple of articles for him, and I did a really good job. He was very happy with it. So I kept looking for jobs in the summer, and I couldn't find anything, I couldn't find anything, I couldn't find anything. And this guy, Babitsky, who was my boss, now my partner, he wrote to me, says, uh, I can give you a job, um, but it's to help me write a book it's not to help me in my law firm because he's working in a law firm at that time. But he's also running Seek. And I'm like, this sucks. I hope I don't have to, you know, lower myself to doing that. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a real lawyer. I want to learn how to do that. I don't want to write no darn book on workers' compensation. So, of course, I couldn't find a job. And I had to end up taking this lowly job helping write Steve write a book. Okay. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. So Steve's very generous. Um, I did the research for the book. I actually did a lot of the writing for the book under Steve's direction. He actually made me a co-author of the book. Okay. And becoming a co-author and, you know, being able to produce books is actually what got me my first job in the legal industry when I, when I went to work for a law firm. And the writing, as we'll explain to you later, as I'll explain to you, has been instrumental in what we've been able to do at Seek. And a lot of it's really just been accidental. What I'm trying to teach you here is for you, don't make this an accident. Think about your writing and how this can open doors for you, and you might not even be, you might not even be able to predict what those doors are. And let me give you a couple of examples of that, right, um, which everybody, I think, will be familiar with. All right. Now, besides for a pulse, what does... <laughs> And I guess a common job, what does this guy and this guy, oh my boy, look at that picture, this guy have in common? Okay, obviously they're both President of the United States. Oh my God, look at this one. We can't, you guys can't see that one on that screen. Um, but if you think about it, what was instrumental in really launching the careers of both of these individuals, right? So, writing, okay? Donald Trump, because he had, he had help here, obviously. Um, he famously wrote The Art of the Deal, or he, it was attributed to him, at least. We'll say it that way. And um, it really helped. I mean, obviously, he wasn't a shrinking violet in any case, but it really helped establish his um, name and his personality, which he has rode to you know, success in, in the entertainment industry and most recently in politics. President Obama, he was the first African-American editor-in-chief of the Harvard Law Review, got a big book deal for that, and it was the book that really launched him. Okay, and then he got into politics in Illinois and the, the rest is history. Okay, so both of these individuals, both of our last two presidents were authors before um, they were president. And I would argue that their writing gave them the benefit, really allowed each of them to be president. I think it was an important part of the piece of the, of, uh, you know, a important step on the road to being president was this writing. Now, when Donald Trump wrote The Art of the Deal. Was he thinking he was going to be president someday? Probably not. <laughs> okay. But stuff happens to people who write. Good things happen. If, you know, it's a good thing to him, he wanted to be president, I guess. Right. President Obama, did he think he was going to be president this time? Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. He kind of got into politics a lot earlier than President Trump. But again, 
good things happen to those who write. And these two people, these two individuals, both became president of the United States.